This Week in Retrospect. We travel back to 1991, where Premier Grant Devine announces the election date. I'm going to call the election tonight, and we're going to win. Through phone lines to each Tory constituency office in the province Friday night, Premier Grant Devine called the election for October 21st. Candidate Jerry Spence and members of his Turtle Ford constituency listened in on the announcement and prepared to hit the campaign trail. But first, Devine made a move on the NDP. I challenge Mr. Romano tonight to get off of Highway Number 11 be between Regina and Saskatoon and meet me in Yorkton for a leader's debate on October the 1st, Swift Current for a leader's debate on October the 9th, Prince Albert on October the 16th, and Lloyd Minster on September the 25th, and we'll talk about leadership and vision for the province of I find this challenge of uh, Grant Devine's really to be a bit of a joke. This comes Saturday in the border city, NDP leader Roy Romano and local riding candidates shot down the debate proposal. This comes from a person who had an obligation to call the election before this time, so that all the people could debate his policies, and he denied this election until the very, very last moment. The challenge for a debate continues to stand according to the PC party headquarters, and should Romano show up in Lloydminster on Wednesday, Grant Devine will be there as well. Hi, Bob. Hi. Coming door to door, saying hello to you this morning. <laughs> all three candidates in the cut knife Lloydminster riding are on the campaign trail. Most people just want to say hello. They'll be reading their stuff over at home and watching TV and looking over the issues. But some people are right ready there. Very intelligent people today. I mean, people are well read. And they've got some really good ideas. Liberal Aldo Dralfari of Cutknife is hitting as many doors as possible. It's, it's a big riding. <laughs> I'm going to try and pound the beat as much as possible. Uh, I have a lot of people out there willing to spread the good word about me. and. And incumbent Michael Hoffner is standing behind the Tory record. Up until Election Day, I plan on going through what the record had been in the past, working with the various groups throughout the, the constituency. There isn't one part of this writing that hasn't had something brought to them through grant divine government and uh, through uh, working with me and, and lobbying for dollars for this writing. We've spent Michael Higgins, News Hour. Dollars. Next, we jump forward to 1996, when Farmers for Justice elaborate on their stance. We need market choice. That's the stance growing numbers of producers and the group Farmers for Justice have taken. The organization was started about four years ago, when a small group of farmers began making border runs, protesting the Canadian Wheat Board's export monopoly. A lot of farmers think that the, the Canadian Farmers for Justice want the wheat board abolished. Well, they've never ever said that. They want the freedom to market their grain wherever they want, when they want. Hurley says the group's position on the Canadian wheat board is one of the biggest misconceptions people have. While many of their platforms stand directly opposite the CWB, they say it's not the board itself, but the way it's run that they disagree with. There's a lot of good things about the wheat board, but the problem is it's the government control of it. Like the wheat board would be the best thing in the world if the government wasn't involved. Hurley says it's that government involvement that has turned the board into a cash cow. And with the proposed new CWB Act, the board is now eyeing the addition of all crops to its jurisdiction. Canola, for example. Do you think I want to take $4 a bushel off the combine and maybe get $8, you know, 1999? I don't think too many people would be happy about that. I know I, I wouldn't farm. Over the years, the Farmers for Justice have questioned a number of the CWB's practices, asking things like why the board's monopoly powers end at the Manitoba-Ontario border, why dual marketing would not work, and why initial prices are often set much lower than world market prices. We're at, they're at 351 right now, which is, right now it's a bad time. The group has in the past taken radical action, such as border runs, to increase awareness of those issues. However, Hurley doubts whether there will be any more in the future. One of the group's higher profile members, David Bryan, is in court in November facing border run related charges, and the group now feels legal action is the best way to settle the issue. You could do a thousand border runs, you think the government's going to listen to you? We want to win the court case first. How large of a precedent would that set? We get dual marketing, is what we're after. And that's all for this week in retrospect. 
Retrospect is brought to you by Webb's Machinery. Find New Holland products at Webb's Machinery, your dealer in Vermilion, Vegreville, Lamont, Wainwright, St. Paul, and Consort.